Hello and welcome to this vMix Replay tutorial. vMix Replay is a complete four camera slow motion instant replay system built into the vMix live production software for the PC. It is included in the pro edition of the software with four camera angle support and also as a single camera angle version in vMix 4K. Our 60 day free trial includes the full functionality of vMix Replay so you can try it out and see if it meets your requirements. You can find that on our website at vMix.com. But let's jump right into our demo. So we can see here we've, we've just starting out with our vMix session and first we want to add all of the cameras we want to use for our replay production. Now vMix Replay supports NDI and cameras using capture cards. But the key requirement is that all cameras need to have matching video formats. That means the same resolution and frame rate across all your cameras to make sure they don't mix and match between interlaced and progressive and some uh, 720p, some 1080p. You need to make sure that they all are in the exactly the same video format. So you need to check through the camera settings to make sure that they match. So we have four cameras plugged in and they're 1080i 59.94 using an AJA capture card for this demonstration. So I'll add the first camera angle, second camera angle, third camera angle, and finally the fourth camera angle like so. So now I've got our camera angles in our production. We can switch to them as we normally would. Now to set up our replay we go to add input and select the instant replay tab. Now the first important step is to check the instant replay system requirements by clicking that link. This is very important to ensure a smooth and reliable replay production. The key requirement of vMix Replay is a solid state disk or SSD. You'll need to make sure you, ins you save the session folder on that SSD. And we recommend a one terabyte SSD for your replay production. So to do that, we will need to select the replay session folder. So we'll just choose a new folder on this SSD and we'll call it replay session. And we select that folder. Now we need to select the recording format and this needs to match the camera format that you set up earlier. So we've got 1080 59.94i and this is the bitrate or quality setting for each camera. You need to select this as high as possible based on your disk space requirements. Now if you're recording in a format of 1920 by 1080 you can select between 20, 150 and 100. Any of those settings lower than that will not work because they'll be too low quality. But you can use those lower settings for uh, 120 by 720 and 720 by 48 standard definition formats. But we recommend to choose 200 for the best possible quality. Now you'll see in red it shows you the recording time available for four cameras. This is an estimate based on the current recording settings you've selected. So you can get an idea of how much disk space will be available. Now this is recording time over all the cameras. So if you record four cameras it'll give you two hours worth per camera uh, for a total of two hours across all of them. Um, so what that means is if you had four cameras, you're essentially recording eight hours uh, can be fit into this two hour recording time. Now, if you open an existing session, it'll show you how much disk space is currently used by that session. Now, you may want to open an existing session to keep all the settings, but you no longer need the recorded footage. And that's what this delete all button here is for. Next, we have automatically delete prior video when disk space is low. If you tick this box, vMix Replay will automatically manage your disk space. So if it's starting to run out of disk space, it will delete oldest uh, replay footage first. So if that box ticks, you're going to have around two hours of continuous uh, recording saved of the most recent footage in time. So you have multiple games, it'll keep the most recent two hours of footage approximately. It's based on your disk race requirements, so it's not exactly the recording time available, but it will be close to it. So we'll untick that for the purposes of this demo because two hours is plenty of time for this demonstration. Uh, now we select our camera sources. So we can select those AJ inputs we set up earlier for all our four cameras. Or you could choose two cameras, one camera, three camera, four cameras. The choice is yours depending on what you want in your production. But you'll notice in this drop down menu you can also see the outputs 
these outputs are vmix outputs and to see where they're configured you can click settings in vmix and you can go to the outputs tab and you can see there's four outputs there that i can assign to an input manually uh, if I so choose. Now the first output is fixed to recording in the stream, so you don't want to adjust that one. BF2, 3 and 4 are available that you could assign to an input in vMix. For example, you could assign it to an input of your scoreboard. Now why that's important is you may want to have a scoreboard permanently synchronized with all the other camera angles. So you could select output 4 here if that's assigned to your scoreboard and that way your fourth camera angle is always the scoreboard and it's in sync with these other camera angles here. So you'll know whenever you're at a particular point in your instant replay you'll know what the score is and what the time is. So that might be handy for your particular workflow but we're just choosing the four raw cameras for this demonstration here today. Next we have the playback audio source. Now vMix Replay is always continuously recording all of the cameras when you have the recording turned on. So it will also include the embedded audio of all those four and also the master audio mix, which is the audio uh, mix in vMix that's sent out to programs. So if you've got commentary or whatever, you may want to select that as the, the playback audio source. But because they're all recorded, you can go back into the settings at any time and switch the playback audio source and it will automatically show you that audio as it was recorded. So you don't need to s select this permanently now. You can go back and change it and the audio will still all be there. Next we have the transition customization controls. So you can select an in transition and out transition. So this is when playing an event to the output window here and when it goes back to live, you can choose the transitions for in and out for that. And then you have event transition which is the transition in between camera angles and if you're playing multiple events back to back you might want to transition between those. Um, for the in and out transitions you can choose stinger transitions the, that you might see on cable sports. So you can set those up. Uh, we won't go over the stinger setup in this video but you can look at our YouTube tutorials and documentation for more information about that. So we've got our session set up with our format, we've selected our cameras, we've got our audio source, which we're going to select camera one, just so you don't hear me when we, uh, on duplicate when we're playing that output. So this is all selected and then we can click OK. The first thing you'll notice is it creates two inputs in vMix, A and B. You can select any of the four camera angles into A and also into B. So this is effectively a four input two output production. So even though all four camera angles are available to select at any time during your production, you can only select a maximum of two to be displayed live at any particular time. And that's what the A and B setup here is for. But if you only have one camera in your instant replay production, you can just minimize that by right clicking it since you won't need it for the rest of your production. And now you'll see the controls that are next to replay session A. The first of these is the cog icon down the bottom here and this is how you can go back into your settings and customize things uh, during the production. You can go into here and you can choose pre-roll and post-roll for your events. You can select a, a music clip which we'll talk about later for uh, highlight reels. You can type in tags. So we'll just fill this in right now uh, with foul and, uh, and goal. Uh, we'll talk about how you can use those tags later on and you've got a couple of other advanced options here that you can find out about by looking at our documentation on our website. Uh, to find the documentation for the replay, all you have to do is click the question mark here to open up our online help file. So those are the settings there you can go back to at any time. Now, the, the simplest replay workflow can be done right here from within the input buttons. So I can start the recording. This is going to start the recording of all four camera angles to my solid state drive. I now have these two mark in mark out buttons. This one will create a five second event based on the most recent five seconds of footage. This will create an event based on the last 10 seconds and this one will play whatever event I've created most recently in my production. So just with those three buttons, I already have the fundamentals of a good replay production. So I can wait for something to happen on the video clips here. So we can wait for this team to attempt to uh, shoot a, a goal. So we're just waiting a couple of uh, moments here for them to make an attempt. 
and there we go. Goes for the shot. He misses it, but I'm going to click that button anyway. And what that did is that created an event of that shot attempt. And all I have to do now is click this button, and it will play that event to the output. As you can see here, the shot's done. And once that's finished playing, it will automatically transition to whatever was previously in the output by default. So I can do that again. I can create events uh, multiple times, and this will play the most recent event. So as you can see there, it's already uh, got the fundamentals of a replay workflow sorted out. And I can drag this control here. So if I play that event again, I can slow it down, and I can see exactly what happens with the ball as it hits the rim. So hit the back of the rim there. So that's the basic controls for replay. But now we can go and look into the Instant Replay Controller, which provides the full functionality of VMX Replay. And this is available by clicking the Instant Replay tab right here that's next to the audio mixer. So we open that up, it will add a new docked tab into your production, and I can drag this back and forth to see all the buttons if they don't all fit on the screen. Now the first thing you might want to do is click the pin button right here. This will undock the replay controller, and you can put it on a second monitor on your computer as a dedicated replay control system. And there's a monitors button here that appears. I can press that button, and it will now show a live preview for that second monitor. You can see here it'll show A, B, and it will show the live four camera angles over here to the right. Now these to the right will always show the live camera angles no matter what. A and B here will match whatever cameras you've selected into A and B. But the purposes of this demonstration, we're just going to leave that docked so you can see the rest of the vMix interface. So the first thing you'll notice along here is the event tabs. This is where I can organize all of the events that I generate and mark in and mark out. So you can see here the event we created earlier has already been populated within the Events 1 tab. And when you're creating events, they'll automatically be populated into whatever tab you currently have selected. So if I select tab 4 as an example, and I mark in, and I mark out, you'll see that that's created an event within tab 4. And I can go back to tab 1. And of course, you can right-click these events and move them to wherever you like. So I can move this to tab 1. I can even copy them to keep copies in various tabs. You want to create a highlight reel of goals uh, that's just for the goals, but you want to keep all your events together in Events 1. That's how you would do it. So we've got two events here. Well, I can also adjust the in and out points by dragging the in and out point section there and here. And, I, and as you see on the preview window right here, it's showing you exactly the frame uh, of that out point as I drag it. So I can get pinpoint accuracy for my mark in and mark out points. And I can go back and edit that. I can right click and remove it, uh, and so on and so forth. And you can see here it gives it a three digit code that's sequentially ordered based on when you created those events. I can drag that code up and down to move it into a different order other than the default time code order. Next, I can select which camera angles will be played back when I play that event. By default, it just selects the first camera angle. So I can click Play Events, it'll play this first camera angle, as you can see both in that highlighted bar there and in the little uh, camera angle controller over here. But I want to select all four camera angles for that event. And if I play it again, it'll play the first camera angle, and then it will automatically transition to the second, to the third, and to the fourth. So you can see here it's jumping between those camera angles as it plays it out, and it will jump back to live when it's complete. Now let's play that event again, because there's a couple of things to point out. Once that event is playing, you can see along here it's got a progress bar that's currently green. This will show approximately in seconds how much time is left for the entire event, including all camera angles, to play. And if you've highlighted multiple events, it will have the total time for each event as well. So we can select here it's red when it's on the last 10 seconds. So I could go to highlight two of those events, and I can play those events out now. And you'll see that it's, it's showing that it's approximately 25 seconds because it's the four camera angles of the first event plus the, five, uh, the single camera angle for five seconds of the second event 
uh, for around 25 events in total. Let's see, now it's nine seconds left, seven, six, we'll get around five, and then we'll jump to the second event, four, three, two, one, and so on. So it's a great way to keep tabs of how much time is remaining, no matter how many events you're playing back to back. So now we've selected four camera angles for this event, we may want to give it some tags so we can identify them in the future. So I could just right click and I could choose one of those tags that I already filled in in the settings window. But I can also type in a tag because it's a missed goal in this case. So I can type that in and I can do that for all of these tabs going along like that. I can type them in and I can also search. I can type in here goal, press enter and it'll show in my events list all the items that match this search terms. So it's a great way to filter, sort and organize your events. So that's the mark in, mark out, you know, events management, how to play it back. Uh, you can also switch camera angles live. So if I'm playing that out, you can see this little mini switcher controller here, which I can use to, to jump between the various camera angles of A, which is the live output uh, of the event, and B, which is sort of a backup one. So you could jump between the camera angles. Now the way that B can be used is you can press the P button here to jump B into the preview window and then you could fade between them as it's playing back. So let's try that again. We'll play it out here, and we've got this on camera angle here. We've got B into the preview, and I can fade to it, and then I can fade back. And so you have full uh, customizability of the camera angles that are playing back uh, live. You know, a way that you can control that is by unticking all of these and just having the first camera angle played out, and then you could switch between it uh, as you go through uh, playing it back. And of course, you can do live slow motion control. So as I'm playing that event, let's choose all the uh, camera angles and let's play it again. I can drag this slider and I can slow it down and I can speed it up or I can choose one of those presets right here. I can also jump to uh, the next section or the next event. I can jump by using these backwards and forwards buttons and I can jump between the events and jump between the camera angles just by clicking them backwards and forwards. So if we're like, oh, let's see that camera angle again, click the back button and we'll play it again. You have the loop button here. So as you go through uh, playing these events, you can loop them. So at the end of the playback, if we go back to 100% there, we're on camera angle three, camera angle four. When camera angle four finishes, the loop will start again from the very beginning of the selected events. So that's the basics of how you could create a highlight reel. You could highlight a bunch of events, play them out, and then turn on the loop button and it'll just play continuously those events you've selected. Or you could go and create a separate tab, such as this one here, and move a, a couple of these events or copy them to that tab, like so. And then I could choose from this arrow here, play all, and that will play all of those events to the output and then I've already got it in loop mode. The final piece of the puzzle of a highlights reel is the music. So you can turn on the music, background music, using this button here, and that's where you can select the music from the settings there to select some background music. I can turn that off again when I'm back in my production. So, so far when we've been creating events, it's been based on the live camera angles as they happen. And this is because this button here is red, which means live. So marking in and marking out is based on the live time code as it happens on your live cameras. But say you want to go back and create an event you missed. You can simply untick that button so that it's grey, and you can use the timeline to drag back into a previous point in the production, mark in, and mark out. And here we have created an event before those two events that we might have missed. And it will automatically order it in timecode order, but I can drag that you know, down here and, and move that order as I see fit, or I can remove it if I find I don't need it anymore. So you can do live editing, and you can also do editing after the fact. And of course, all these cameras still continuously recorded in the background, so you can jump to live, and I can mark in, and I can mark out where I left off. Um, and of course, 5, 10, and 20 second presets help you with that. A couple of other final controls that you might want to use when this mode is in grey is this button here. This button will jump to the very last frame in the production. Now that's a workflow that's commonly used where I can jump to the last frame, I can mark in, I can drag this back and then mark out and create an event that way even when I'm not in live editing mode. 
But we'll jump back to the live editing mode because that's usually the easiest way to create events. Uh, also have a, pl a reverse playback button here. We have this button to play the last event as you saw next to the inputs. And we have a general play and pause button so I can just jog through the timeline and play stuff just like it's a long extended video clip. And finally, within this window, we have the Export Clips button. So I can select an event such as this one, and I can click Export Clips, and I can export it to disk in MPEG format. So I can choose, it's by default in the Export folder within your replay session, and I can choose My Export. I can choose the selected one, which is this one highlighted in orange right there. I can choose all of the events in the list. I can even tick this box to export them separately. But we just want to export that particular event. So I can click that button. It will sort through the events and export it to uh, disk just like that. And you can share that folder on your network and have somebody on a separate laptop upload it to social media, convert it, even drag it into a video editing program and begin editing their own highlight reel if you want to have multiple operators working on your replay production in that way. So this is all of the controls that are available within the vMix Replay controller, but you may not want to use a, a keyboard and mouse. And there's a lot of different hardware control options available using the vMix shortcut system. A brief uh, overview of the shortcut system is going to Settings, Shortcuts, and you can click Add, you can click Find, you can press a button on any of those controllers, and then you can assign it to one of the replay functions. You know, replay A selects the camera angle for A, for B, you can toggle live, you can jump to now, fast forward, rewind, move selected inputs, play uh, inputs to outputs, uh, replay, uh, select the different event tabs. Pretty much everything within this replay controller is available as a shortcut. And you can assign it to a button press on the keyboard. You can assign it to a bunch of different control options available. We support MIDI controllers, X key controllers, uh, joysticks, uh, keyboard, as I mentioned, and there's also some dedicated replay controller options. There are a select number of controllers from JL Cooper that can plug in via USB and they have full replay control functionality. There's also a controller from Contour Design called the Shuttle Pro V2. So you can create a, a shortcuts and you can customize whatever you want to control within the replay controller. But maybe you just want a template that already is ready to go with the basic replay workflow. And you can go to the templates to see the two templates that we have available within vMix. There's one for the replay GL Cooper Ease slow-mo controller, and there's one for the Shuttle Pro V2. So we have the GL Cooper Ease slow-mo plugged in today. So we'll use that for this part of the demonstration. And I've already applied the template. I simply select that and click Apply to import it. And you can see it's imported all of these different options here. So how that works is it's got a jog, jog and shuttle control. So when I'm playing back this here, I can go backwards and forwards frame by frame. It has mark in and mark out buttons. So I can go back and see, OK, there's a shot there. Let's go a little bit before it and let's mark. Um, well, let's turn off live mode first. We can mark in. And let's go back out and mark out. And we've just created that event like so. Um, and there's a, there's a button here to, to play back that event called the replay button. So I can press that and it will play, um, play that event. And I can, in fact, select it and play it again like so. And in fact, I didn't catch the start of that properly. So let's go uh, a couple of seconds before using the drag and drops, and I can press the replay button again. There we go, I've got the shot now. The event is ready to use. So there's the backwards and forwards, there's a T-bar control, so when I'm playing this event, for example, I can slow it down and speed it up. These are all fully programmed controls. Uh, you know, I can pause, I can go backwards, I can go forwards, I can fast forward, and I can rewind. Um, all of that functionality is uh, available and programmable within the controller, but if you just want something ready to go, those templates might assist you in getting started.
Finally, with this uh, GL Coupe Electronics eSlomo controller, it has a built-in number pad. Now that's handy for these three-digit numbers that I mentioned here. We can go play by ID, and you can actually type in using the number pad a bunch of sequential events you would like to play back. So say I want to play back 002, and then I want to follow that by 005. Put those in, press enter, and it's now playing that uh, event of those first four camera angles and it will jump to event number five and we can use these forward buttons to skip through and jump to that and so once that's finished playing it will now jump to event number five and once that's finished uh, it'll go back to the beginning again so that's how to use hardware controllers with vmix now for a list of controllers that we support you can go to vmix.com go to the supported hardware page and check out the controllers uh, tab and it will show you the JL Cooper models that we support and it will show you the MIDI controllers and also the X keys controllers. Some of them have jog and shuttle controls on them as well so we make sure we note that on the controllers page to make it easy for you to locate the controller that suits your requirements. So thanks for watching this replay video. If you want to know more about vMix Replay, you can download our trial from our website and use our 60-day trial. You can also read our documentation. And for any other features in vMix, you can check out our YouTube channel. We have a lot of videos covering a variety of different topics. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Click to watch another exciting vMix tutorial.